I gotta be honest, sometimes I'm just staring at our YouTube production schedule, trying to come up with a brilliant new idea for a gaming PC build guide, and sometimes I end up with just a mint colored gaming PC and a mint colored shirt. Not exactly my most innovative idea here, but today we're looking at a somewhat performance tuned and definitely mint aesthetically tuned gaming PC that costs around 500 bucks. I also now have some beef with the brand Vitru and we'll talk about all of that after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT8 and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys, but also a ton of other stuff such as Office and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay. And they even have console stuff too, like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple and only takes like three minutes total. So activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark. And don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. All right, so there's zero meaning or deep thought that went into this build. So let's just start off with the parts list and run right through it. Starting with the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 36 and you've probably heard me before explain why this is the best option for budget use builds right now in early 2024. For around 65 bucks on AliExpress, you're getting six cores and 12 threads that can still dominate 1080p gaming. You can pair it with a pretty high quality GPU without bottlenecking it, and you have a solid upgrade path for it in the future. Paired with our Gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi motherboard, you'll be able to upgrade this CPU to a Ryzen 5 5600X or maybe even a 5800X3D later on down the line. Now, there are indeed some cheaper options options always available compared to this Gigabyte DS3H Wi-Fi model, but I buy this one at 80 bucks because B450 has the most compatibility, it has built-in Wi-Fi, four RAM slots, and the aesthetics are clean and minimal. For the RAM, here we're just trying something brand new to mix things up a bit, and this is the Giga Stone White 2x8 Gigabyte kit clocked at 3200 megahertz. This was randomly the cheapest all-white DDR4 kit that I could find one day at 40 bucks, and since I've never seen this brand before, I knew I had to try it. I did a little research on their website, but honestly, there's not a ton of information here, they make all sorts of products like monitors, peripherals, and even chargers, but nothing seems like a huge red flag here. I mean, this USB-C charger costs $142, which is kind of crazy, but it is 2024 and the price of everything is going up. And speaking of which, SSDs are probably the most affected by inflation right now. This is the P41 Plus 1TB Gem 4 drive, and this has been one of the cheapest 1TB SSDs available for a few weeks now. We were buying these 1TB SSDs at the middle of last year for around 30 to 30 $35, and now the cheapest you can get one for is a little over $50 kind of sucks. And we are seeing reports that the price of SSDs is going to go even higher than that, by the way. So if you are thinking about building a gaming PC in the near future, it's not a bad idea to buy that SSD now to save yourself some money. And finally, the last thing we have here during the motherboard prep is the CPU cooler. And I'm just going to go with the stock Ryzen cooler that I, of course, painted white. But always remember that you usually don't get one of these if you do buy the 3600 from AliExpress. Sometimes you'll get one if you buy from a used marketplace like Jawa or eBay. But when you buy from AliExpress, you almost nope. never get one. If you don't get one and don't have one laying around, then feel free to just go with the Thermalrite Assassin X Refined SE ARGB because that's always available for less than 20 bucks. Moving on to the power supply, here we're going with another MSI A550BM, which is a 550 watt, 80 plus bronze, tier C rated unit, and it's pretty good for the $50 price tag. There aren't many models at or below $50 right now, so I've definitely been appreciative that this one's always available for the last few months. We're also plugging in some cable extensions to it, and to tie the mint and white color scheme together, I'm using the Easy DIY White extensions, which you can always pick up off Amazon for $20. Just as a reminder for our newest PC builders that haven't quite learned the ropes yet, these cable extensions aren't mandatory and it's purely just an aesthetic choice. You don't have to buy them if you don't want to. Well, they technically aren't mandatory. They are for someone like me, but maybe not for someone like you. Do you need cable extensions every single time? For me, yes. For you, no. And the other step I thought we were gonna have to do to the power supply is install some white carbon fiber vinyl wrap, but this is why I have some beef with Vitro now. As you guys know, whenever a case has a PSU cut out in the basement, I always love to vinyl wrap the power supply to take the aesthetics to a whole new level. For our case today, we have the Vitro M03. And if you look at the first picture on the Amazon page or even the new egg page, you'll see that there's clearly a hole in the PSU basement. Again, going back to that process of where I'm just staring at this YouTube production page, trying to come up with build guides, whenever I do end up buying the PC parts, during that time, I'm usually not scrolling past the first picture. Turns out that's not the best strategy because this first picture is apparently just straight up fake news because all of the other pictures after that show that there's no hole in the PSU basement. Now, make no mistake, this isn't a huge deal and our build's not gonna blow up or anything, but WTF? 
how does a brand like Vitro get away with that? Vitro makes some good affordable products these days and I know they're making a ton of money with some of them like the V5 CPU cooler and some of their AIOs. So how in the world does something like this just slip by? The other problem that I have with the case, which is even less important, is the official color name of this case is Army Green. Now, I've personally never served in the Army myself, just eight little years in the US Air Force, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think there's a single Army in the world that's rocking this color. Did they attempt to make this the actual Army Green and this is how it turned out? Or is there actually a mint colored Army out there that I don't know about? Either way, none of these issues are really that serious and the case was perfectly fine to work inside of, so the only part we have left to talk about is the GPU. This here is the SJS GTX 1660 Super and the only reason I'm using this is because we bought this card and others for our AliExpress GPU video a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to fit it in a build. If you're following this build along at home, probably with a different color case though, I would definitely recommend either getting the 5700 XT or an RTX 2060 Super. The cost of this 1660 Super was $126 on AliExpress and that's not absolutely terrible, but this is the price range of the better cards that I just mentioned, especially the 5700 XT, so I would get one of those instead. Next week, we're releasing a pure performance, no aesthetics build, and that'll definitely have the 5700 XT in there, so make sure you subscribe if you wanna see a build like that. Oh, and speaking of aesthetics, I almost forgot about the case fans. The Vitro M03, Three only comes with one black RGB fan, which honestly looks pretty ugly and out of place. So I uninstalled that and used a full six pack of these up here white RGB fans, which you can buy for $37. This is a cheaper fan kit as they aren't PWM, so you don't get the full control of them, but they all plug into one single hub with just one cable each. So cable management isn't a nightmare and you can control the colors to be whatever you want with a remote, which is super easy. All in all, here's what the total parts list is looking like. And you can kind of tell that I just threw this build together after coming up with a mint idea and it came out to a total of a about 500 bucks. You absolutely can do better for $500 with a better GPU, but let's see what this system is capable of because it's still pretty impressive. Starting with 3D Mark's Time Spy per usual, we're looking at a score of 6,123. And for a reference point, that's a good bit lower than my previous $500 white build that got a score of 8,424. That build was rocking a much better 2060 Super, which again, you can fit in this $500 price range. And before we move on, if you happen to be a YouTuber watching this video, then this is 100 percent not the type of build guide that you're going to try to beat and then tell me that you won the competition. I feel like I've given enough disclaimers that this isn't the best of the best, but you never know when someone will ignore that information. Rant aside, next up we tested Cyberpunk 2077 and with 1080p and low settings, we actually got a pretty decent 73 FPS average, which is pretty solid for a 1660 Super. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 also did great at 89 FPS with 1080p and basic settings. Hogwarts Legacy got 74 FPS with 1080p medium and even Starfield has a playable 52 average FPS, but we definitely had to crank down the settings to 1080p low with a 50% resolution scale and it didn't look that pretty. Here's the rest of the games that we tested and other than Starfield, everything is certainly getting above 60 FPS and with games like Fortnite, Valorant, or even Apex Legends, we're rocking those triple digit FPS numbers, which would be great for a 1080p higher hertz monitor. We also stress tested the CPU and GPU with Cinebench 2024s just so we can see how the cooling is inside of here and the highest our CPU ever got was 79 degrees and the GPU only got up to 62 degrees. Degrees. Very nice and chilly. But yeah, if you were looking for a mint color gaming PC, then I'm glad I got you covered. But for everyone else, the video on the screen now is how to build a proper $500 gaming PC.